Hey everybody, Mark Agnesi here for Gibson TV. Today, I'm in the Soho neighborhood of Lower Manhattan, on my way to check out one of New York City's most renowned guitar stores. Opened in 1978, Rudy's Music specializes in rare and vintage pieces, as well as high-end archtop guitars by some of the world's most foremost builders, acoustics, electric solid bodies. They've even built custom guitars for some of music's biggest stars. And that's why for over 40 years, New Yorkers with discerning taste have always come to Rudy's Music. Let's check it out. I'm here now with my friend Rudy Pensa, owner of Rudy's Music. Thank you so much for having us, buddy. Oh, absolutely. I mean, what a pleasure to have you guys here. Well, this is so such a uh, it's such a beautiful space, such a beautiful store. I mean, let's go back to the beginning. How did you get into the guitar business? When did guitar start for you? I think guitar started at a very early age. I think it was six or seven when my father asked me if I love the piano. I said, yes, I love the piano. He said, but what do you want? I said, Dad, I want a guitar. Boom, downtown Buenos Aires, and he got me my first guitar. That's where the craziness about guitar started. What were you listening to at the time that was getting you into that? I was listening to Shadows, Frank Marvin, yeah. and uh, Ventures, of course. It, it, at that time, it was a lot of instrumental music. New York City has such a rich musical history and some of the greatest players to Rid ever come out. Rid what, ridiculous. What's it like to have been a part of that whole thing. I mean, you're you're a part of Mark. That Mark scene. is unbelievable. I mean, this kid came from uh, Buenos Aires, uh, and I wanted to come here since I was my 15 or 17 or 10 years old, whatever. And to come to New York and then open a place in 48th Street that was most of the stores, like Manny's, and yeah. I don't know. I think I was a little crazy. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't know how difficult it was. I just, I didn't care. I, I, all I wanted to do is be a run guitar. Is that, the, uh, is that the original sign from 48 up there? Yeah, that was music one stop? The very, very early days of 48. And then slowly, because we used to have music stop, it was in a stop sign. Then we took the stop sign, then we got Ruth's music stop, and then we took the stop, and now it's Ruth's music. <laughs> People used to tell me, we come here, because number one, you shake hands, which no one in the street, people used to throw, out of the, throw you out of the shops and the other shop. It was funny, it was, a, it was a different environment. But me, because I only have a few guitars and, and I love guitars so much, anyone who came, it was like a celebration that somebody played guitar. And I gotta tell you, man, I, oh, I learned so much from customers. At that time, great guitar players, people not famous, just great guitar players, and they want to be around guitars. This were me to find. That's what that's that, that's when I started to the search of find the instrument that these people want, you know. And what a beautiful ride, you know. It was it was incredible. I mean, just looking around the store, there's like so many great photos of you and the who's who of music. I mean, you mentioned Mark Knopfler earlier. Who are some of your other favorites that you've gotten to become friends with or close with over the years? I don't want to forget anyone, but I have a lot of great friends, man. He has had Bon Jovi and uh, Shanks and Shanks and uh, yeah, Kirk, Kirk. As Smith, John McEnroe, the guys from Air Smith, Conan O'Brien, Sean Lennon with my daughters. My Sean, buddy Eddie Martinez. Eddie right there. Martin, love, my great friend Eddie. Santana. This is a I, Mark Knopfler was playing with Eddie Clapton, 1987, and Mark invited me, and Clapton loved the guitar, and he played, and then we, we designed under the Arbor Hall, that's at the Arbor Hall, we designed a guitar for Eric. Nice. Yes. Lenny Kravitz used to come to the shop when he was a little kid. <laughs> oh, right. oh, yeah. As a matter of fact, when he played in Argentina in a stadium, I said, Lenny, who, what are you playing? Oh, in a stadium. I said, tell me the name of the stadium, because I know I'm a soccer. Well, he told me the name Boca Junior. I said, you know, my grandfather was a member, founder member in 1905. And you're gonna play there? I gotta make your guitar, I wanted to play. Oh, he cool. played in front of 40,000 people and then he called me and said, his grandfather was a founder member of the club. And I made a guitar with the colors of the, of the team, which is the same color of Ukraine, blue and, and yellow, and he played it. 
and um, and I donated to the club in memory of my grandfather in 1905. Jimmy Page one time opened the door that I had Super 400. It was 9,000, and he opened the door. He said, "Excuse me, that guitar is 900 dollars." I said, "No, Jimmy, it's 9,000." Ah, okay, and he closed the door. Oh, dude. Opa! Oh. That original Korean V? Oh, as an original, as a 1958, all original oh, flying V. Come on. Oh my God, is it, now it's really flying the V. Whoa! So light, man. Unbelievable. Best guitars ever, man. So is this a 58 all or 59? All a 58. 58. They they made basically they made a they made a lot of 58. I think and some people say they made all 58 and then delivered in 59. But all made you know, it's not clear how many they make. Yeah, we know how many we shipped, but we don't exactly. Know some people made, seven, yeah. 80, 100. I don't know. All I know that this baby is all original, Corina Wood, unbelievable guitar. And then I went through maybe two or three. You know, no more, no more than that. You know, they, they don't appear all the time. You know. Oh, that is... <laughs> I don't know, what is it, five pounds? Uh, it maybe. <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe four and a half, five pounds. No, it's incredible. And such a beautiful sounding guitar. Of yeah. course, you know, Brazilian Rosewood. Yeah, yes. Just, just beautiful. And think about it, Mark. The guitar is 58. How old is the wood? At that, yeah, probably 50 years old before it was even... Exactly. Uh, it's more, the, the wood is more than 100 years old. No. A beautiful Korean, you know? Anybody who deals in vintage guitars, I always have to ask this question. Are you happier when you're buying or are you happier when you're selling? Both. Yeah? Yeah, both. Is this still the thrill yeah, to, to find yeah. this stuff? Oh, 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 are you kidding me? I travel to the moon to find the guitar. I, I can't sleep when somebody called me and, I, and, and just to open the door or open the case. That is one thing that will make me quit. If I open the case, it means nothing to me. Then and, you know. Oh yeah, and time then it's time to go. Yeah. And another thing that I love now, I just I just find a collection of uh, players' guitars. What I mean, players' guitars, guitar they are refinished, guitar they lost. Yeah. I love that. Just to have this guitar that was only players, you know, no collectors because they don't have everything 100%, you know. But the wonderful sounding guitar made me so excited to also to bring it back to life, to get a guitar that uh, I have uh, some of the guys working for me. They have magic to do that. that. They can get a mandolin or an old guitar and some pieces and put it back together. Oh my God, to me, bring it back to life is something is, is, is beautiful. I prefer that sometimes than a guitar that is perfect. The, the vintage guitar, they still, they still give me that rush, you know, and, and, and because it's history. What's it like when you go track one of these guitars down and you finally get it and then you turn on your TV and you see somebody on stage playing that thing? It is unbelievable. It, it is a beautiful feeling. Now the mission is, is find a good, good home. That's the way I see it. Yeah. Because after all, we don't own anything and we just hold it for a little while. That's what it is with everything in life. This is why to be too attached and don't let them go, no, it's not the right thing to do. The right thing to do is enjoy, Play for a little while. I always tell people, you're gonna sell it right away. No, I gotta do my honeymoon. After, the, yeah, I gotta do the honeymoon. <laughs> yeah, knock a little bit off. How, yeah, right. sometimes the honeymoon is a little longer than other times. Sometimes it's two weeks, sometimes it's a month, sometimes it's a year. But eventually I know that I have to let them go. I see so many times guitars, they are like perfect brand new from the 50s, 60s. They're not particularly great sounding guitars. There's a reason why they're mint. Exa exactly. <laughs> eh, no good. <laughs> and the ones that are more beat up, it's incredible. The sound is amazing. Of course, they were playing, you know, for a reason. One guitar to do it all for the rest of your life, what would you have? Oh, now you kill me with that. I know, it's a terrible question. It's a terrible question. But I think it would be my nylon, nylon Spanish guitar. Spanish guitar. Yeah, that would be. Right off have, into the sunset with yes, that one. Yes, yes, yes. I, I still, I still love 
classical music. I still love to listen to ridiculous classical guitar players, Segovia and Julian Bream and all those guys. And one guitar in an island, you see, one, uh, there would be that. And then uh, it would be a strat and a Les Paul. <laughs> a couple you know, other things. Right there, right there, right there. Right there. Yeah, yeah. Right there. <laughs> But, uh, but uh, if you ask me one, it would be my nylon, nylon string guitar. People ask me, you know, when are you going to retire? I say, I didn't start working yet. No. I do something with so much love and so much passion that it's no work. At my age, my old age, eh, I'm vintage, I'm not old. I tell <laughs> vintage. People, I'm vintage. Yes. Next time you're in New York, make sure you stop by Rudy's shop here in Soho, yeah. or check out his new location in Scarsdale, or check him out online for his full list of inventory at rudysmusic.com. That does it for me. I'm Mark Agnesi for Gibson TV. I'll see you guys again next time from another iconic music destination on the next episode of The Scene. Peace.